Hey music makers and music fans, welcome back to my channel. For today's episode of the Power Music Show, I'm excited to talk with you about one of my heroes, uh, songwriting prototypes, somebody I very much look up to as a craftsperson, uh, Craig Minowa of Cloud Cloud. Cloud Cult is such a local hero around here in Minnesota and I've long admired them for many reasons. There are so many things that they do so well and so exceptionally. But today I want to focus with you on how Craig makes personal stories a universal experience. If you're not super familiar with Cloud Cult, I highly recommend you check them out. I I I Suggest that you start with the Light Chasers album, which is a concept album, and of uh, it, it's just one of my all-time favorite albums. The uh, uh, height of artistic achievement that they accomplished in that album is just so staggering. I, I think I should probably make a, a video dedicated to uh, that album sometime. But anyway, you can thank me later. So the first song I want to check out is uh, called Running With The Wolves from the Light Chasers album and it starts out like this. Okay, so I paused it right at the intro, but you noticed how towards the second half of the intro he started inserting some, uh, well, I don't know what to call it, like chanting or, or vocalizing, uh, like ooh, ah, right? Like that sort of thing. And you soon see shortly that, again, this is a very relatable story about somebody who is sort of stuck in a reality that doesn't reflect their true nature and you know, running with the wolves literally is about answering the call to the wild and and uh, well, well I don't want to uh, give too much away let's look at the lyrics uh, next but um, one thing that Craig does really well is that while he's sharing these very vulnerable very dark sometimes um, thoughts he can do it also with playfulness and whimsical gestures mixed in there as well so the whole thing doesn't come across like oh I'm so miserable right uh, which I think I'm guilty of sometimes creating a, like a monotone kind of feeling where it's just a little overbearing like you get that you, there's a particular feeling being expressed but because you could be morose and pretentious that you're like kind of like oh come on right um, it's very possible in uh, music that um, especially um, explores more darker side of our experience but he can lighten the tone without compromising the gravity of the situation and it's through those light touches and gestures like those you know playfulness that he can do and that that creates this duality of light and dark and it makes the lighter side makes the song a lot more accessible you don't have to be in this really serious mindset to get into his songs it just kind of draws you in and then once you get there you kind of start to look at and listen to his words and you're like wow he's going through some stuff <laughs> okay so here's a uh, jumping ahead a little bit to the second verse
He is very poetic and evocative with his words, but at the same time, you, you know exactly what he's talking about. Left our cubicles in little flaming piles because I need to feel something different just for a little while. And um, Craig's, uh, technically speaking, not the strongest writer in terms of these tuneful, gorgeous melodies. His melodies are vehicle for delivering his strengths, which are his words. So, but notice how speech-like his melody is. You can totally understand every word he's saying. There's no unnatural sort of a forcing of words into phrases and timing that don't really fit the natural flow of the language. And, um, and then like, you know, at the end of that verse, right? Like I said, um, I need to feel something different for just a little more. Uh, it's just, it's just like that. I mean, he, he will sing it like that. And right after that, he drops the chords and just focus on the rhythm. Uh, for a little bit while so that you're less left to ponder what he just expressed and going wow yeah <laughs> I relate to that right and then he brings it down further to say um, I'm not coming home I'm staying with the wolves and um, that is a sort of a stark moment of decision that comes at the beginning of the third verse uh, after building to the moment of going, yeah, I need to feel something different, right? That's like one of the sort of the earlier climax in the song. And then after that, you go, yeah. And so I'm going to stay with the wolves. And the song is perfectly constructed to deliver that narrative. All right, so the next song we want to check out is called Complicated Creation from the Love Album. It goes like this. I call up the moon for a little consultation. Yes, you know that I'm a happy man, but something in me's burning. Gotta push it, push it up, push it, push it up, push it up. So much frustration. <laughs> the moon called me back and said, I'll give you some advice. You gotta live a little lighter, gotta breathe a little deeper. Gotta suck it, suck it in, suck it, suck it in, suck it in. There's your medication. Alright, so that song starts out with the band singing together. Um, I, I think I read somewhere in one of Craig's interviews that he thinks of his voice as kind of thin sounding, so he likes to double and then have the band joining a lot to kind of create this sense of um, communal singing and uh, thicker vocal uh, like a chorus or choir type sound that he favors but uh, I think it's really cool how he creates this communal feeling by having different people voices coming together but it doesn't compromise the personal nature of his song a lot of times the more voices you add the less personal the song feels um, but but for some reason, with his song, that doesn't happen. Is that at once the song is, again, communal feeling, but it remains very personal. Um, again, there is that whimsical, playful touches uh, this time that the band inserts um, that is adding to that sense of, yeah, you know, this is a communal thing, this is a community thing, let's join in, let's sing along that sort of inviting vibe um, but then there's not much else going on besides the singing so you can't help but focus on the words and again his melodies are highly kinetic in that there's not a lot of big arches and jumps and things like that but it's highly rhythmic and um, you know this this bit about for example 
uh, I gotta push it, push it out, push it out, push it out, right? That, that's the thing, you know, it's very specific in terms of rhythm and then rhythm is a very powerful ingredient in terms of creating catchiness and hook in music um, that is uh, not all, all, that is often um, not used to the extent that it can be, but Craig is perfectly capable of just inserting distinct rhythm that uh, is uniquely his way of sort of putting things together and saying things that makes it much more memorable. So the next song that we're going to look at is called I Am The Force Field and it's a recent single that they released from the upcoming album that they're going to release later this year. And uh, let's listen to the second verse. It goes like this. And I can only cry when I'm alone. I guess it's something that I accidentally learned from my dad. So I'm hiding in the woods with a shovel and some photos, digging up feelings that I never knew I had. And they're building me a tree fort with a trap door. So once again, his signature move is in ample display there in terms of very speech-like melodies, really evocative words. One of the key themes that he's really sort of come back to over and over in the last decade, decade or so of his career is this idea that we are the ones who are in our own way and that um, you know, this time the the line is, I built me a tree fort with a trap door, but I'm the only one <laughs> that I ever catch. And uh, man, he, he can just put such unique spin on saying the same thing. And I, I, I relate to that so much and it's very comforting. But uh, to, to come back to... Uh, Cloud Cout's uh, new songs and to, to find that the thing that I was relating to them 10 years ago, 15 years ago, um, and one of this universal experience of um, inner growth and, and, and you know, overcoming pain and obstacles and, and you know, trying to, to overcome our own sort of limitations or you know us getting in our own way kind of thing right um it's part of his artistic identity what part of his value or his mission to write songs about that and um it's just such a strong focus and strong voice and but at the same time you don't feel that he's repeating himself because every time there is a different spin in terms of how he delivers the main thing that he's concerned with. Um, in terms of the songwriting approach, again, you can see his, his uh, emphasis on the rhythm, how his instrumentation is sparse and it gets even more spare uh, at the key moment. And then after that, you're left with sort of a passage that just focus on rhythm and groove so that you're left to kind of ponder and sink in the meaning of the words. And um, all these sort of... Craig is one of those writers who have very distinct personal style and um, he is content to let his voice and his habits or uh, what comes naturally to him be his style and, and he doesn't need to deviate too much outside of that and um, 
And because his songs convey so strongly his values and his concerns for humanity, that becoming a fan of his music is just like his music, it's a communal experience. And Cloud Cult is one of the rare acts where if I meet a fellow Cloud Cult fan, I feel so comfortable with them because I know that if they like Cloud Cult and if I like Cloud Cult, we have common shared values about our concerns for the fellow human being that I kind of feel safe with them immediately and I feel like I can be friends with other cult, cult fans and and I know that uh, we're gonna look out for each other and um, that's that's rare that doesn't happen with a lot of other bands um, and it's all because Craig is so honest in terms of bringing his very vulnerable, very personal human experience and telling stories about that. But he does it in a way that still uh, makes it accessible through the use of his sense of humor and lightness and playfulness and then having his band contribute to singing and, and having vocal lines that really honor the words and all that. And it all adds up to this sound, this band, this identity, this community that um, is built around his concerns, his values, and those of us who are fans come together and sharing that, and it creates a, a bond in a way. So in the sea of populist music and AI and just genericness, dominating the popular music, somebody like Craig and Cloud Cult gives us, a, gives us an example of how to be distinct, how to differentiate themselves, how to be very clear about who they are so that we know what to look for them and we know how to relate to them and we know what they bring to the table. And there's just so much to admire about their artistry and, and, and their sound. And I didn't even get into all the other things that makes them very uncommon, unique, in, like in terms of how they incorporate uh, orchestral instruments into their arrangements and uh, how, you know, they do uh, have a, a you know, visual art element into the shows and, and things like that, right? There's just so much creativity and thoughtfulness going into what they do and I can tell that that Craig and the band is always thinking about how to spin it in their own way whatever it is that they have to do so it's anything but mundane and generic and the result is a band that has a maybe not as huge as they could be but they have a very very loyal following and this rare uh, phenomenon of the community having, you know, being sharing such strong sense of common values that just meeting fellow fans is like, you know, meeting a new friend kind of thing instantly. All right, that's all I have for you today. Thanks again for watching. Uh, I'm sure you can tell that when it comes to Cloud Cult, I get super excited uh, and that I hope. Uh, uh, if you're watching this, you're probably their fans already, but uh, I hope you got something out of it that you didn't think about before. And or maybe this is your first time you heard about Cloud Cult, and, and in that case, um, you can thank me later. Anyway, um, I would love to hear your thoughts in terms of what you got out of this episode in, your com in the comments. And um, yeah, I will see you in the next video. Thanks again.